me. Why or how did you uh, get to learn about Interlac? It was in 74. 1974. And uh, I was a teacher at the time. And we wanted to uh, have a different kind of holiday. And my wife Hilary's father and mother had been exchanging many years before. And they had exchanged with families in the United Kingdom. So uh, when we wanted to do this, we, we, had, we saw an advertisement, an advertisement in the teacher's magazine for Interbank. So at that time it was Colette O'Brien in Dublin who was the organizer. And we wrote to her and she sent us the information. And we joined Interbank. And uh, we had intended to go to France the first year. But um, we saw a very attractive offer in Gothenburg and here in Sweden. And we ended up going to Sweden for six weeks, which was a big surprise and very enjoyable, one of the best holidays we've ever had. Uh, Frank, I know from members in Denmark, from members in, in, in other countries, that um, the first reason why people are trying to do an exchange is um, that it is a cheap way of doing holidays. Was that the, re the, f the main reason for you as well? Probably it was. Uh, it meant we could visit countries for longer periods of time than we could have afforded otherwise. And I think in particular when we came uh, to Sweden we realised that we could never have visited Sweden and gotten to know the country if we had come on a, a normal holiday. Have you, have you um, kept contact to some of the families with whom you've been exchanging? Yes. Uh, the, our very first exchange family, we hope to meet them in the next few days here in Gothenburg. They are now on an exchange with an English family and when they arrive back tomorrow or the day after, we have arranged to meet them. And we have written to them in those years in between and we've also kept in touch and contact with other families we have exchanged with as well. We have even exchanged with you. Yes, and that's right. Contact. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Stop you, Peter. Frank, uh, how many children do you have? Three. You have three. Do you think it is an advantage uh, doing holidays on home exchange when you are a big family? Uh, I think yes, it is. <laughs> For the, one of the reasons is the, the cost, really, that's one. But that's not the, probably the most important one. I think um, for children, if you stay in a hotel or some place like that, even in renting a, a home or a caravan or one of those, you don't have the games and all those things that children need to have. But when you come on an exchange where there are also children in the family, they have the use of bicycles and toys and books and games, just like they would have had at home. And for that reason, I think uh, if you have two or three children, even, even one child, it's, it's very useful. What's your name? Fergus. Your name is Fergus. And um, do you remember where you have been with uh, your mother and father on home exchange? In which uh, countries have you been? Um, most countries in Europe. I've been in Sweden here now, and once before. I've been in France. I've been in <laughs> lots of other countries in Sweden, mm -hmm. in Europe. And uh, do you like to come into other people's house and to stay there for your holidays? Oh yeah, it's great because there's other houses, you can meet the other people, make friends and play around. Now you're in Sweden, have you found somebody with whom you can play and uh, do you have any problems with the language? Yeah, well, um, the number one language in the school is English, so all the children, there, they're doing it since they started, so they know a bit. And most people around the country know English, so it's okay. Do you still feel it's a problem to communicate with them? No. no. What is your, um, when you're coming in to another child's room, and it's his room and he has all his toys, he has everything in there, um, do you just use all the things? Or do you play with, with the toys or are you afraid of um, doing any damage to other people's things? Well, I will play with things once I'm just that little bit careful, once I don't break anything, because it could be special to them, you know? Yeah. But can you tell me then, I mean, you are now in Sweden in another family's house and they are in your family's house. 
And uh, have you ever come back from a home exchange where some of your things uh, were destroyed or damaged? No, never. No, never. Um, do you think that when you are grown up, adult, when you have your own family, do you think that you would like to continue doing home exchange? Yes, I would. You would? Yeah. Okay. Well, Hilary, Frank has told me that uh, you have been doing a lot of home exchanges. As a wife, as a housewife, do you think that it is a holiday just going to somebody's house and you do the same as you do uh, in your own home? Oh, yes, well, it is a holiday because I'm not at home. I'm in a different country, a different type of house, a different kinds of food, and different people, so it's a lot of differences. I still might have to cook the meals and that, but um, you don't have to eat at home all the time. You can eat out if you want to, you can eat at home if you want to, so you can do as you please, really. So enjoy it. Well, why do you think that home exchange is uh, good? I mean, why do you do home exchange instead of uh, buying uh, a charter trip to somewhere in southern southern Europe or, you know, so that you don't need to do anything at all? Yes, well, it's a different kind of holiday. I mean, we've tried to uh, uh, holidays like that, package tours, and we've tried camping, caravans, different methods. Um, they're all enjoyable, but I like the house exchange because uh, you can go to for a longer time, it doesn't cost you anymore. You can stay five weeks, six weeks, and you still pay the same fare. And also you get to make better friends and neighbors and contacts in the countries that you always have to write to again. And um, we've even had our son in France as a result of this. He has met a French boy and went to his house for two weeks. So uh, things like that don't happen as easily if you go on a package tour. You're just another tourist in a resort. You're there for your two weeks and you're gone. So I think it's more personal. Yeah. But does this mean uh, you said that uh, your your son was two weeks in France? Uh, how did you find the contact? How did you find a family? It was from the internet book. They contacted us. Yes. From a um, yes. book like this? Yes. Oh. That family has also made an exchange this year with an interact family in Switzerland. So. Uh, their son, Toma, came to Ireland at the end of June and stayed with us for two weeks. And then Adrian went back with him to France for two weeks. And Adrian came home on a That's Thursday. And we came to Sweden on the Saturday. And they went to Switzerland on the Saturday. So they are now probably finishing up their holiday in Switzerland, just as we are finishing up our holiday in uh, Sweden. I see. What was the reason why you wanted uh, to send your, your son to, uh, to France? Well, I'm studying French in school and uh, he will need to, to hear the accent because they have an oral exam to do and in Ireland you won't have French speakers where he can listen to. So it was a great opportunity for him. But I think um, there are so many possibilities of sending uh, youngsters abroad. Uh, you, you can buy, um, stay in a language school so that you are sure that uh, your child will, will be uh, taught. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you make that choice instead of just having a book and sending your, your child to a family you don't know? Well, I would prefer to send him to the family, but we had the other boy with us and uh, we just treated him as one family and then when Adrian went over there it was the same with him. And uh, I think a better the one English speaking person in the French family has to make an effort to speak the French. He's not going to hear